And now we're off of mute, and I hope it's running. Uh, this is Thursday. Yes, okay, great. This is Thursday uh, of week eight. Next week is the last week of our, our first quarter. Uh, I have been having guest lecturers coming here. Uh, we have had a Thunderbird pilot. We have had a missile uh, professional, Colonel DeKemper, talked about Russia and missiles and what has been like his, his world. And we also had two enlisted uh, troops come in here last, what, Tuesday, and talk about the enlisted career path. Uh, today, I'm going to talk straight through for about 45 minutes. Uh, this class is going to get up and leave, and the other class is going to come in because this is a weird day here at Prescott High School with about 30-minute classes. Um, today, I'm going to talk about myself, Denny Peoples. You can call me Denny if I'm not giving you a grade to uh, make an A, but otherwise, you call me Colonel Peoples. Uh, I'm going to talk about my background in South Carolina, where I came from. I'm going to show you the, through the modern technology of Google Earth exactly where I came from. I told you where I went to Georgia Tech as a college uh, kid, and then how I ended up flying F-4s, F-15s, and uh, starting the Junior ROTC here. Uh, let's see if I can show content to the people here, and let's see how that works. Did that come up? Okay, Google Earth. Does anybody know, I guess this is a geography question, how come we don't look at the earth like this? Because it goes all the way around, sir. Because it's upside down. How come, how come we don't look at south up? How come that's not a typical view of America? It's upside down to you. But who was the first person to write, to draw a map and said, hmm, Columbus. North is up. Columbus? <laughs> if you ask me on another day, I'll tell you. It's quite a long story. But you ever wonder why, why is north up and why is south down? Because of but, the magnetic pole. Magnetic pole? Well, they got a magnetic south pole too, right? Oh, uh, because of the... Uh, it sounds like you're just guessing. Because of the equators. No guessing. No guessing. Okay, I grew up in another country. It's about 2,000 miles that way. It's called South Carolina, okay? This country of South Carolina is actually a state, but it is as different from what you guys have grown up in here as other countries. There are other countries that are closer to South Carolina, culturally, background, fauna, animals, beaches, than, Arizona is. And really, in any other place in the world, Arizona would be a different country than South Carolina. Okay? You can see how uh, vegetated everything is here. I actually grew up right here at uh, 746 Adger Road. And when I tell my children that I lived across from the high school, you can see I lived across from the high school. My actual house is this one right here where my hand is. Okay? And so, I mean, I was literally across the fence from the high school. Uh, this was a Methodist church, which I did not go to, but all my friends did. And so I tell uh, my kids that it was a joke that I could sit here at the, at the actual high school, had a big, big loud bells, just like we did, and I could sit in my, <laughs> we didn't have showers, in my tub, and I could sit there and go, oh, until the bell rang in high school, and I could hear it, and I'd jump out of the tub, dress up, grab my books, and be in the classroom seat in five minutes. Is that pretty amazing? And I did that for four years. It was no big deal. Uh, the reality about South Carolina is that when I went to this school, which is called Dreer High School, and let's see, I can actually do the... Uh, the modern technology here and show you my actual house. This is, you know, it looks a little different than uh, Prescott, right? That is my house right there. That's where I grew up, okay? My father built that. My father was a real estate developer. And you know what? Right here on the left-hand side, you can see a little pole there on the left-hand side. That was my basketball goal. <laughs> I put up the basketball goal and play basketball there all the time. 
Right across from my house is, guess what, a huge high school. Nice. <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, that high school is brand new, meaning three or four years old. It was not the original one that I had. My original high school is right in this field right here. So, I mean, I was even much closer than that appears to my high school. Yes, sir? Um, when you, do you have to hop that fence to get into school? Uh, actually, no, because when I was there, the high school was in this field, and it was wide open plaza, a lot like, matter of fact, the senior patio here sort of reminds me of my high school. You'd walk up to a patio with benches and then to the actual school. My school was three stories tall, and it was a big square with a center courtyard. And uh, that was how they built it in the 1930s, and that high school lasted until the 2010, and now this is the brand new one there. It's called Dreer High School. It's the closest high school to the Capitol building of South Carolina, because Columbia, South Carolina is the capital of South Carolina. So we had very good education there, very good education. The crazy thing that happened there that really affected my life is that uh, when I was a kid, there was a uh, something called integration. Does anybody know what integration is? They took one. You, my, my interpretation of integration is when they take one thing and combine it with another. You're exactly right. And so when I grew up in elementary school, wherever you guys went to elementary school, Reasons. there was not one black in my elementary school. And then about fourth grade, they had forced busing in South Carolina where Washington, the, you know, president, the, uh, the uh, government of America said, you will positively have integration and you'll have a certain amount of blacks with a certain amount of whites. And what they did in South Carolina at the time is they had, rule, they had roads, like, the, like this road right here that came across. This was a, oh, I can't even show it to you, sorry. <laughs> here, I'll, uh, I'll put it up on the screen here. This road that came across right here might have been a boundary for this high school. Or this road. So everybody over on this side went to a whole other school than the people on this side of the road. And essentially, there were white schools and there were black schools. And about fourth grade for me, they changed all that. And they changed around the lines. And so I had to go to a brand new fifth grade school that I had never been to. And it was integrated. It had blacks and whites there. But again, in South Carolina, you're around, you're playing basketball, you're playing sports with, with black and whites all the time. Just in, School, it was different. And then by the time I hit high school, which is right here at Dreer High School, uh, it was completely integrated. And it was about 80%, 85% black and 15% white. So think about you guys going to a school where, well, again, the minority out west is not blacks, the minority out west is Hispanic or, 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 or uh, uh, Mexican. Imagine if you were a 15% white background in a Hispanic culture high school. And so that's what I grew up in. And uh, it, it affected me because I was the minority as the white guy. And I don't have the picture here, but I, <laughs> I hope you bother me and get me off track some other time. <laughs> and I will tell you, I'll show you some pictures of me playing basketball. And I have 14 teammates and they're all black. <laughs> that's the way it was. I mean, that's the way it was. That's, that's how it was. And, and uh, But because we were all in one room building didn't mean everybody got along. There was still a lot of fights. This is a downtown big city, sort of like Phoenix. The blacks generally hung out on one side of the uh, school, and the whites hung out on the other side. Uh, so there were definitely areas of the school that I would not go to. I, I was nervous. I would get beat up. It was just, wow. And uh, one of the worst memories I have of my life is uh, me playing basketball. And, you know, you got out at 3 o'clock. We went to practice from like 3.30 to 5.30. And around 4 o'clock, early in the practice, just like the gym. In fact, your gym here, here at Prescott High School reminds me of my gym in, uh, when I grew up with. The coach comes in. Coach is a big, huge black guy, and he goes, practice is over. And it never happened. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I don't think you should practice basketball when one of your teammates just got stabbed out in the parking lot. 
And they were arguing over a boom box, which you guys do not know about, but it was a, a boom box. Okay, yeah. Well, that was high technology. That was an iPod and an iPhone combined. <laughs> and they argued about a boom box. And one of my teammates, to be exactly right, one of our teammates, who was a very gifted guy, pulled out a knife and stabbed a huge football player and and bad, bad scene. It was a bad day for our high school, <laughs> needless to say. Yes, ma'am. Did he die? Oh, yeah. Herbie, Herbie, Herbert Bovane was our, my buddy's name. He was, <laughs> as, he was as big as that wall, and he died. He got killed. And, uh, and, and uh, Cleon, Cleon, I can't remember the guy's name. The, the uh, actual athlete, our, our teammate who did the killing, uh, was that big also, but he was lean. He was lean and quick. And truly, he could jam the ball. He could dunk the ball in eighth and ninth grade. He was, he was an amazing basketball player. But guess what? He went to jail for 30 years. Yeah. So that was kind of a tough situation. But guess what? The high school training I had was amazing as far as academics. Uh, I did pretty well in high school. I took all the advanced courses, and you know, I, I did okay in that. The uh, issue was my family did not have any money. We lived in that, that house, which looked beautiful, and it's middle class. I mean, it was nice. But they, my family had no savings. And so all in high school, I kind of knew that I was going to have to pay for college myself. So I applied and got an Air Force ROTC scholarship to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is in what, 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 uh, what, what town is Georgia Tech in? Does anybody know that? Georgia. 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 What town? Georgia. <laughs> that shows how great we are with the uh, job. What town? Georgia. That's an Arizona answer to other questions in other states, right? Okay. What town is the Grand Canyon in? Phoenix. <laughs> when, when, I, when I grew up, I thought the Grand Canyon was in Nevada. You know, it was up there. <laughs> oh, that's neat. Um, okay. So here we go. Georgia Tech is a... Uh, actually in downtown Atlanta, and uh, it is, I, I, whenever you guys get out of high school, whether you go to college or not, one of the very first questions you need to ask yourself is, do you want to stay around mommy, daddy, <laughs> or do you not? And uh, I did not. I wanted to go out and see the world. My mother and father were healthy. I wasn't taking care of them. Uh, they didn't have cancer. By the way, there's the bell. See you guys Monday. Yes, I'm going to keep I'm recording. <laughs> keep, keep recording. All right, take care. Huh? I think he did. Yeah, he, I'm 52. He's 52. There's, I, there were rumors of my buddy seeing him around out of jail. All right, take care, Ryan. Okay, my cadet's online. I'm still recording. Uh, I went to Georgia Tech. There's a picture of Georgia Tech in downtown Atlanta. Uh, like I was telling the previous cadets, one of the first questions you want to do after high school is do you want to stay around mommy and daddy or do you want to leave mommy and daddy? Uh, I did want to leave mommy and daddy. Uh, the next question that you have for uh, yourself is when you leave mommy and daddy, uh, do you want to stay in a big town or you want to go to a small town? Uh, same thing for college. Do you want a college with a lot of athletics, football, basketball, baseball, or a more of an academically more motivated college or a smaller college uh, like Emma Riddle. Emma Riddle didn't have a big football team. They emphasize engineering and they're the third best in America. Uh, so those are kind of the things you want to look at after you make, get out of high school and make those decisions. Uh, I actually applied to the Air Force Academy and the ROTC. And my time is a similar application process. Uh, I got an appointment to the Air Force Academy and also got a full scholarship to ROTC anywhere in America. So they don't give these type of scholarships anymore. I could be a pilot and I could be a full scholarship or I could go to the Academy and do that. Um, my dad was, was fabulous in making an appointment uh, at the University of South Carolina to actually uh, have me talk to an Air Force Academy graduate who is in charge of the 
ROTC at the Air Force at, at University of South Carolina. So I went and talked to that individual, and uh, he asked me whether or not I wanted to make the Air Force a career. I was 17 years old, and I said, well, I don't know about the Air Force a career. I'm 17, but I sure would like to fly jets, uh, which was really my passion. I wanted to, uh, to be able to fly jets. And so I chose to go to Georgia Tech instead of the Air Force Academy because that was the advice I was given. Um, at that time, it was a good choice for me because uh, during my, uh, my college years, I had a lot of uh, ups and downs in my family. I actually had my dad die unexpectedly, and then consequently I had my grandmother and grandfather, who are very close to me, uh, die also. And if I had gone to the Air Force Academy, uh, there is no telling what would have happened if I was 2,000 miles from South Carolina. Uh, I might not have made it through as far as, as, uh, as well as I did at Georgia Tech. At Georgia Tech, when you go to college, I took ROTC, uh, and it is just like a class. And, uh, and for my hybrid students, it is just like a lot of ways, like this leadership labs that I have planned for the uh, hybrid military studies class. You have a two-hour leadership lab once a week, and then you also go to class about other than three times a week and learn about leadership. You learn about uh, uh, the history of the Air Force and many of the exact same subjects that we cover in military studies. Uh, my George Tech years were a lot of fun. Let's see, I can, uh, I can actually show you this. This is the uh, actual college area. There's, there's the, the uh, football stadium there. It's right on the interstate. It's a big city, like I said. And actually, this is the, uh, let's see, I'll take you right hand. This is the dorm that I actually lived in. You can see the dorm. I actually lived right in this alleyway. Let's see if I can move up that alleyway. Can I move up that alleyway? Let's see. There you go. That's exactly, you can almost see my first uh, freshman room was right down there at the bottom of that dorm. Uh, it was on the, in the basement. And I went there as a uh, mathematics major. That's the, uh, <laughs> the fancy um, bell we have here getting kids to run. I went to Georgia Tech as a math major. And with that, uh, I have a funny story that I thought I was so good in math because I was taking, uh, taking you know, advanced math at the time. And I was making A's. I was so smart in high school. Got to college, math got kind of tough, especially for engineering, especially for a top-ranked school. And so my uh, first big semester test, of course, is in December, and I took my math test. And at this college, uh, you have about, I think it was two and a half hour finals, maybe three hour finals, like eight to 11 rings a bell. And you have maybe four questions, maybe five, for three hours of uh, exam for your final. And the one test was the one grade you get, uh, as I remember. And so I sat down and I looked at these five questions uh, and the only numbers on these five questions were the numbers of the questions, one, two, three, four, five. Everything else was a variable. And I was going, man, hmm, I'm a freshman. How in the world <laughs> am I going to do this when I'm a, a senior? And I didn't quite, uh, it kind of intimidated me, honestly, to realize how hard the, uh, the you know, the, the actual math at the college levels can be. So I chose to get out of mathematics and, and Georgia Tech, and I got into civil engineering. And so I'm actually I got a civil engineering degree from Georgia Tech, and uh, the Air Force wanted a technical degree so I could be a pilot. I graduated from Georgia Tech, 
and actually it's a pretty important date in your life. I graduated from Georgia Tech on uh, December 10th. I graduated from Georgia Tech on December 10th, uh, 1982. I believe it was a Friday. Uh, but, ironically, uh, when you get in the military, there's a certain amount of years that they will let you serve. And for colonels, full colonels, uh, the maximum amount of time that you can serve is 30 years. So, in 2012, uh, December 10th, 2012, that is 30 years from this day that I graduated from Georgia Tech. So coming up here in a few months, uh, December 10th, 2012, which is a Monday, that will be the last day that I'm allowed to be a res full reservist with uh, benefits. So I will be retired uh, as a colonel uh, from the military on my 30th day. Uh, incidentally, my roommate, his name's Jerry, Jerry Ty, <laughs> He was a Navy uh, officer. He was commissioned about, a, about an hour before I was because, you know, they have a different timing. And as I remember, he uh, always gave me grief that he outranked me, which technically he did. Uh, and, but he, the same day, is the exact same uh, importance to him because he is a Navy captain, a, a, current, a full colonel in the Navy. And, uh, and so this day will be 30 years from him also. After I graduated from Georgia Tech, Let's see, uh, I went to uh, the Air Force because they'll send you wherever they want you to go. It's not like you volunteer. And uh, the place that they wanted me to go was to be an engineer. And I went uh, as an engineer to, to Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, when I was talking on the phone to the guy that said, uh, would you like to go to uh, South Carolina? Uh, the exact answer was, uh, sure, I'll do that, but, uh, you know, why? And he was sending me literally to South Carolina because, because he said, well, you went to Georgia Tech and it's not going to cost us very much more money to, uh, to send you to, to send you to Charleston. So, he literally sent me to, to, uh, to Charleston, South Carolina because it was cheap. And that's how your life uh, changes sometimes like that. So, uh, so from Georgia Tech, then I went to Charleston, South Carolina. This is a uh, picture of it. And I was an engineer at Charleston Air Force Base. I knew Charleston real well. I loved it because it was, uh, you know, my family's from South Carolina for many generations. Okay, I'm going to stop this till I get in. Come on in, guys. Take a seat. Come on, take a seat. Do you guys have attendance bill? Already done. Great. And... Uniform. Already done. Okay. We're going to show you all this technology here. Uh, everybody online, this is my, this is actually not my class. It's Colonel DeKemper's class. It's a uh, uh, 200 class. It's a U.S. AZ history class that we teach interior to the ROTC. I'm going to take some time and show them around. Uh, guys, the camera at the back of the room is on, and you'll see me control it here. There's your backs. Okay, that's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Modern technology, everybody likes to be uh, introduced to this. And actually, we can uh, go to this camera and see if uh, we can actually... That's, uh, that's not a camera I like to use because it shows how ugly this room is. <laughs> not how ugly uh, my partner Bill is, but yeah, I can go hey, real you, tight on here. I'm glad you went in on somebody else. <laughs> And I can go straight on to, let's see how, <laughs> I've never tried this, look, look at I'll beat you back, hey, Colonel, hey, Colonel, I'm gonna, I'll beat you back over there. <laughs> 
I'll be back over there. We're good to go. Uh, okay, so yeah, I can have a lot of fun with this all the way around and see who's picking their nose and who's sitting there laughing. You know, by the way, who's hiding from me? Where is he hiding? Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> so yes, I can do that. And believe it or not, I can control these at the remote locations. So I can, uh, I can do it anywhere they want to. Uh, what we do for our military studies class is we actually uh, you know, meet in here. I'm online Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, just like this. This is all being recorded, by the way, right now, guys, for your pleasure. You can see this on YouTube tonight if you'd like. Uh, you're on YouTube. Cody, you're on YouTube, buddy. Yes. yes. You, can use, you can watch YouTube in our, our room. But what I do is I record it through this complex system, as well as back there for my cheapo uh, home video camera. And one of the two will work. <laughs> they don't always work all the time. Do you not have a seat? Can I down and come here and get a seat? What is that? What is what? Triangle. The triangle, that is called a light. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, the triangle that's in the wall. The, it's oh. not the ramp. Oh. This is a ramp that goes to your basketball arena. Oh. You know, out there. Oh, like underneath the stairs? Yeah, yeah, you know, okay. when you go up to the, to the basketball arena. No, what's that ladder? That goes up into the attic. It's called an attic. It's very complicated. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, what I do, though, guys, is I do record this stuff. And uh, one way or another, whichever recording is the best, uh, it is then put up on YouTube. And, and you'll be able to search in MS100 uh, week 8. And then this is Thursday. And if you put in Denny Peoples, I have a channel. And you'll see... Now dozens of this stuff up there, but you'll be able to look at your stuff and uh, and see how see how pretty you look on TV there. No problem. Okay. Um, by the way, everything you guys say, whisper dust. Whisper. That's being recorded right over your head. Okay, oh. so so we have these recordings, and you'll be able to hear Whoa. everything. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be able to you'll be able to hear everything that you're recording. Okay. All right. So now we're we're, we're, we're so, so don't sit there and go, gee, Colonel Peoples really looks funny there today, or today. Yeah, just today, or uh, don't don't make any other wisecracks. It'll be recorded forever, guys. Okay, you guys uh, have missed the first part of this, which I talked about with the other, uh, the other military studies class. But I'm going over my career as a, uh, as a Southern boy who grew up in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, my family did not have money saved up for me to go to college, so I got a scholarship. I went to Georgia Tech uh, in Atlanta, and I'm a civil engineer. Graduated from there, and then uh, just now, in the progression of this talk, I've just now gotten into the Air Force. And so uh, what I will do is when I show content, it'll show up here, and you'll actually see what is going out to the other students. So after Georgia Tech, uh, I was actually stationed in Charleston, South Carolina. And again, this is in uh, the other part of America, which many of you guys have not visited, but you hope you will. Charleston, South Carolina is between Miami and uh, North Carolina, and this is on the ocean. I just uh, finished telling the other class that the reason I was stationed in, North Carolina, in South Carolina and Charleston was because it was close to Atlanta. They were saving money by not having to move me very far. So it's crazy how your life changes for those simple reasons. This is on the beach in the uh, area over here on the left. This is actually the Air Force Base that I was stationed at. Okay. The Air Force Base is a joint use base, and uh, for the Air Force portion, that means that they have Air, Air Force planes right here, as well as civilian planes, so it's joint use. So it's a lot like Phoenix Sky Harbor. You can see now that they have these huge uh, C-17 uh, planes on there, and that was uh, sort of at the beginning of my career when I was a civil engineer there. I was there for about a year and a half. Uh, what's the most important thing about your any job you have? What is the most important thing about any job you have? Money. Money? Just money. That's all I care about. 
Uh, no, no, no. You won't have it if that's your attitude. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Was it important for like you having a job or yes. was it important about that a job? Yes. <laughs> Which one? Both. both. Okay, both. Okay. Um, the good thing, or the thing that you'll need to get a job, depending on what you want, is definitely education. <clears throat> Somebody yes, says. but when you have the job, what's the <laughs> most important thing? To keep the job. Work ethic. Work ethic and make your boss happy. If you do something that doesn't make your boss happy, what happens? He's not happy. He doesn't need you, right? See ya. If you do something that doesn't make your teacher happy, you simply earn a less grade than your next door neighbor. But in a job, they will fire you. They're gone. Okay? And the military is like that. Okay? There are no, there are no secrets in the military despite the, uh, the movies and stuff like that. They know absolutely that you will not drink and drive, you will not do drugs, you will not do this, you will not do that. And if you choose to follow the rules, then guess what? You could get to do stuff that nobody else in the world can do. I sat there and have flown supersonic planes twice the speed of sound that Bill Gates and who's the guy that founded Facebook? Zuckerberg. Yeah. Never get to do. They're the richest guys in the world. They can't do what I ch chose to do because I gave up, you know, my my other careers in order to serve my country and follow the rules. You had a question? Oh, so you were saying you can get fired from the military? You can get fired from the military. I kicked out three people because they were overweight. Okay? You know what the rule is? You gotta work out and you gotta be in shape. And if you're not in shape, we'll give you a couple of warnings, Ben, see ya. I kicked out one person because they, they tested positive for pot. I went home for Christmas, and guess what? If you get, you get drug tested, you gotta go pee in the bottle is the term. But you go pee in the bottle and if you're a commander, you're trying to find 18-year-old kids who screw up, when do you test them? After they go away for spring break or after they go see mommy and daddy in California and they're studying in South Carolina? And you always catch two or three and boom, they're gone. Do you want people handling nuclear weapons that have been taking pot last weekend? <laughs> I mean, think about it. And so, uh, and plus, we have plenty of people that want to, want to follow the rules and want to get the benefits and want to be in the military. So, uh, Anyway, I learned to play against, uh, play with the rules. I really did, and I uh, I loved uh, being in Charleston, South Carolina, and I did everything I could to make my boss happy. And with that, I got selected to be in pilot training, and so I transferred from being an engineer into being in pilot training. Uh, I then was stationed in, in in another southern town. I'll show you this. Since these are all different countries for you guys, uh, everything on the East Coast is, is as different as uh, night and day, but Columbus, Mississippi, it be, how do I spell that? Columbus, Mississippi, there we go. Great job. Okay, there we go, Columbus, Mississippi. It is a... Uh, Smaller town, actually, it's probably not not that much different from uh, from Prescott, but right here north of it is a big base, and that is an Air Force base, Columbus Air Force Base. And you go there as a schoolhouse. It is the Prescott High School of pilot training, and I went there for one year and became a pilot. It was the worst year of my entire life. It had the most stress and the most misery of my whole life. Uh, because I knew that depending on how I did, that one year affects the rest, of your, the rest of your life. And if I screwed off and I partied or I didn't study or I was lazy, then the rest of my life would be affected. So I did the best I could. And uh, I've told some of you guys a story, but I'll tell my hybrid course class, is that I started out and there was about 48, as I remember, students in my class. Now they're a lot smaller because there are a lot less planes. But uh, after the first quarter, first couple months, uh, I was about number 35. I was at the bottom of the class. And the way it works, after one year, they grade you number one through 48, and the top 10%, top three or four, get exactly what you want. They get exactly the plane, the exact assignment you get. Everyone else 
is given what the Air Force wants to give you. So, I sat there and, and again, in the old days, we didn't care about your feelings. I don't care about the fact that you see your name up there and you're number 35 and you're number 2 and you're number 48. I don't care about your feelings. They care about you performing and doing well. So every day we walk into a room like this and there was a very original computer printout, very primitive <laughs> today, but it was right there on the wall and we'd come in, I remember my roommate and I, his name was John, and he'd go, hey, you're 35, ha <laughs> ha, I'm number 27. <laughs> that made me happy. <laughs> that didn't make me happy at all. Just kidding. He was a very smart guy. Don't get me wrong. He's very smart. And so anyway, I started to crank and kick it in and study. And I put the stress on yourself like you guys put your stress on yourself with your grades or, or your work or stuff like that. But uh, after about half the year, I moved up in the 20s. And I was about at 22. Yeah, out of 40. And by the way, there are people fall out. I think we graduated 38 out of 48. So 10 of the people could make it. They're gone. So, uh, but with 10 of the people gone, now 10% of 38 is about three people. So only the top three people would get what they wanted. So I was very stressed and I kept doing well. I kept studying and it came down to the last uh, part of the year. I started to do a lot better when we started flying fighters. And I'll show you this. The uh, first plane that you actually fly is something called a tweet. Has anybody ever heard of a tweet? Tweet? Twitter? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> no, this is a T-37. That's exactly what I flew right there. Uh, that was a T-37. You sit side by side. It was made by Cessna. It's very old, very <laughs> slow, but very maneuverable. And a lot of fun. So this, this, the, the student is on this side. And the, pilot, the instructor pilot's on this side. Uh, the bad news is the instructor pilot could touch you. Okay? So when you're sitting here flying and you screw up, he would just bang you on the side of the head and say, What are you doing, you moron? And boom, your head goes banging over. And it was very much different education <laughs> than we do now. And uh, Did you ever wish you could hit him back? No, because no, I was too worried about flying and killing myself. I mean, you're going, I guess, 200 miles an hour, 300 miles an hour, not, not very fast, kind of slow. But, uh, up but you learn, learn how to do, you know, loop-de-loops. You learn how to do aerobatics, stuff like that. And uh, actually, in this plane, uh, I had an injury that has affected me to this day. Uh, the actual uh, coming back to the Air Force, the airport, uh, you actually had to come and fly over the field and then have a descending turn down to land. And you went 5,000 feet and you descended down to land in the airfield, the level of the airfield is about 3, uh, 300 feet or something like that. And so it was a big descent. And I had been coughing and I had been sick, but I said, oh, I'll still fly. Well, when you're sick and flying and you have snot, you have congestion in your, your head, you can have what's called a sinus block. And because there, you have cavities in your head where your sinuses are and your nose. And actually, I did this descending turn in this plane. And all of a sudden, I had a sinus block right here above my eyebrow. And it felt like an ice pick being put through your head. It was the worst pain, second worst pain, I've ever had in my life. And it, it made me all of a sudden immediately you start crying and you start sweating and you feel like you're going to die because of the pressure differential. Well, my instructor took the plane and we climbed up and then I did some procedures and landed properly. Of course, because I had pushed myself, I was then not able to fly for a week or two. I got behind my buddies. My roommate was now at number 12 and I'm number 16 and things were ter terrible. And to this day, I still have pain here. That one, one thing, because that one plane, <laughs> I still have that pain here. Um, once you do well in that class with that plane, then you actually go to something called the T-38. And that is a supersonic trainer. And it is a, uh, it is a really a fun, fun plane. Fun. This is it right here. Oops, let's see, that's not a big picture. But you guys can get the idea of it. Uh, uh, that's a fun plane. That's better. It's, it's, it's a fun plane. This is actually Edwards Air Force Base. 
but you can see that the, the instructor sits behind you. It's called tandem. And when he sits behind you, he can't hit you upside the head. <laughs> and that was great. This is the first time you go supersonic. You go up to about 45,000 feet, and you push the nose over, and you go supersonic for the first time. That's a big fun thing to do on Fridays, okay? Uh, <laughs> but you actually then also fly formation and start actually doing fighter pilot stuff, meaning going 500 miles an hour. And you know, if, a guy, if a guy's going 500 miles an hour in a circle, how exactly do you catch up with him and line up within three feet of him? You can't point at him. If you point at him, by the time you get there, he's here. And now you really look like an idiot. And so, uh, so yeah, you actually learn how to do fighter pilot maneuvers in this plane. And fortunately for me, I did okay in that. That was when I started to hit my stride. I studied, I got through my sickness, and I started to do well. So actually we had our final check ride where you actually go out as a formation and do maneuvers and rejoins are called, and I did okay in that. And so on my final check ride, two days before graduation, I went from about number seven to number three in the class. Oh, you got to pick your... Uh... Ding, 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 I won. Yes, I got to pick my plane, and I got an F4. So I got a fighter, and the F-4 uh, was a uh, Vietnam, Vietnam fighter that was left over uh, being phased out. But uh, let's see, this is exactly what I flew. Yep. Why did you choose that one? Because, as my patch right here says, it was called Double Ugly. It was a manly man plane. It was a MiG killer, and it was a warrior's plane. Uh, this plane right here, uh, again, was tandem. You'd actually fly with me in the front and my back seat in the back, but you could put all the weapons of the world on that plane, and it would, uh, it would wipe out everybody at the time. Uh, it, was, it was towards the end of its career. It did excellent in Vietnam, but uh, it was uh, really a, a fun, fun plane to fly. And so from there, I actually went from Columbus, Mississippi, with some detours, uh, I actually went to Homestead, Miami to actually learn how to fly the plane. So I went down to southern, southern Florida to, let's see, not the racetrack. <laughs> I went to that airport base right there. And uh, actually, this is southern Florida. And if you're a beach bum like me and you like to scuba dive, Guess what? That was a pretty good assignment. I really enjoyed that. And I was there for about a year, you know, learning. I knew I was a pilot, but then to be able to take, when you, anybody can shoot a gun. That many people can shoot a gun and hit the target when they're being shot at. That takes training. Okay, when you're being shot at, it takes training. And so it takes me about a year to, to learn how to fly the F-4 and to be able to employ it as a, as a weapon and accurately do that. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to knock this off right now. Any questions for me? Do you own the plane? Do you own the plane? Do you own it? No. No. The plane, there's, that's a, why would you own the plane? Because you got to choose it. The government thinks <laughs> No. No, that, that's, uh, that's not exactly how it works. They loan you the plane. The taxpayers of America loan you the plane. What did you name it? Uh, I, I don't know, name the plane. Okay, I mean, it's, what do you mean? It's an F-4 Phantom. Well, I know, like, don't you name your plane? Some people give names. No, 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 that's, that's, that's neat in movies in World War II, but that's not exactly how they do it now. Oh, oh, question? Cool. One last question, yes. Call sign. Well, that's a great question. My uh, exact call sign is very original, but uh, it's because I didn't make many mistakes. It's Peeps. P-E-E-P-S. Because, because of my name, yes. Well, it's not like from Top Gun, like Maverick. Those people screw up. Oh. And when you screw up, you get your name made after the screw up. When you don't screw up, your username usually comes after your last thing. 